Bright and early in the morning, we have got a tanker load of diesel fuel. <laughs> Maybe this is deaf. We had deaf coming. I didn't expect them this early in the morning. So we are way down there on deaf, the diesel exhaust fluid. This tank is empty. He's going to fill that and he's going to fill up our fluid all tank. Morning, Didge. Come here. Morning. Filling and we'll fill this guy too. Deaf is full. That's a little bit of a relief just because we were getting down there the next few days here. We were going to need deaf. I'm going to fire up the dryer. We've got two maybe three hours of drying that we got to do so the dryer is as close as it ever is behind us or in front of us however you'd want to word that we just got such dry corn this year we've been lucky we haven't hardly had to run the dryer overnight much you two want to wrestle or you're just having a chilled morning go get her oh there it goes there it is there we are morning morning you want to hop in? Yeah. I'll take you and Dad up to pocket. Okay. Grab my stuff. Morning, Josh. Morning. Yeah, we'll bring the trucks in on the west side. It probably wouldn't hurt while it's warming up just to hit them, but yeah. we had some of these lug bolts uh, come loose yesterday. Actually, we lost a couple. I'll check the other side while we're out here, but we brought the three-quarter inch battery impact and zipped them up, which is not nearly tight enough. But we're we're. We're gonna check them on the way home here. We only got 40 acres to finish in this field. Those ones look good. Cart tractor started, that's good. Combine's running, that's good. It's cold out, so we always worry a little bit about that. It got really dusty yesterday. Yeah, the windows got really bad when the sun was going down. It's been bad every day, but not just in the last few days. Right. Just inspecting a few things here with the new header the Deer C12F, so it's a folding header. It's got a lot of things we like. It's got lights on the on the end snouts here. It's got the rollers that run up. You can fold the side panels up and down. I, I like to keep them down most of the time, personally. I like the folding part of it. Stock stompers are doing a, a pretty good job. They're all integrated, so they come on the head just like that. They're not in the way when you fold or put it on a trailer. And honestly, the knives are doing a really good job. It's chopping the, the residue up into really small pieces like we want here. Heck, we even got Jim out here going already. Jim's been doing this tillage game long enough. He just shows up and gets going. He's long gone before the rest of us roll out of bed in the morning. This whole draw right here, we had it, uh, this actually was a ditch at one time that cut this field in half, but we had it covered. We put a huge pipe underground that runs for a long ways here. It was a very expensive thing to do, but it put the field together. We've got some big basins stopping the water uphill there so it's not supposed to flow over top but with the 30 year rain that we got it did and it disrupted all this down in here i guess you can see it's good here but in spots like this it just washed it out so there's a tile riser underneath here underneath this flag that i didn't see yesterday and we're gonna have to come back and fix that right here right here you didn't see that from in the tractor <laughs> that's well, that's the thing. You can't see the spot this year where the planter lifted up because the rain washed it all out. Yeah, yeah. So, obviously, I didn't see it with the combine either. <laughs> but it's there. And then I think I'll go check to make sure, but the other one is where that those stocks yeah, are standing. All right, there's our cage. There's our tile opening right there. So the soil washed down the hill. And I know that's a bad thing. Trust me. We own this soil. We want this soil in this field. That is why we covered this and put basins at the top to prevent it. These basins were engineered by the USDA to handle a 30 year rain, the largest rain event you're gonna get in 30 years. Obviously, we surpassed that engineering and we had some issues here, but we are gonna put a larger riser on this. We're gonna fix this as soon as we're done running tillage and harvest. We're gonna flag it for now. We will come back and fix this before the ground freezes up so that this does not happen again. Yeah, the cage is in there. What is this? It's just underground. Just that much rain just did it. Those basins worked, they held the water back, but they wiped out the, the risers, they just covered them. All right, so the first one is flagged, the second one right here actually looks fine. End rows. I hate end rows on corn. They should be done here in about 
three hours or so coming through the yard we'll fuel everything up check those lug bolts on the combine i'll make sure the dryer's running in the meantime then i think i'm gonna probably take the combine over when we switch fields check on how the dryer is doing here now this screen will bluetooth to my phone but the problem is that i found out last week is that i need a physical modem to plug in it and then pull line of sight wi-fi out of the yard because we got it on the shops which i don't really know what that means i'm not good with that stuff but anyway i need to have my telephone company handle that before i can actually get it on my phone who'd have thought probably anybody that knows anything about internet would have thought but i didn't I think we're all done putting on points and sweeps for the year, so let's all get the steel pile out of here so it's not on the floor. It's already noon and we haven't had a single breakdown. It's good. Yeah. How much they got left up there, can you see? Can't see from where you're sitting. I'm going to run up the road because I think they should have the bolts in that we need for that combine wheel. Never driven one of the new Masseys, but always kind of had a soft spot for anything Massey because Grandpa was a dealer back in the day. Although Dad did have several Massey combines when I was a kid and he still talks about how much he hated those things. The bad news is they did not have our wheel bolts in. The good news is I got a, the correct filter for the semi-truck. Hopefully the correct filter anyway. Look at that. Ha! Took me three quarters of harvest, but we got the correct air filter. Sounds like they only need one more truck up there to finish that field. Alan just got back with this one. Really? And I sent him into the break room in the shop to get some hot chili because our local FFA chapter actually just brought out six meals of hot chili. And I'm not one of those farmers that constantly thinks we need to be thanked. You know, I obviously, I know we need farmers. Obviously, I know it's hard work. I understand the importance of it. But I just think, you know, we're out here doing what we love to do. You don't have to thank me. But the the local FFA chapter bringing us out a meal, that's just, it's just cool. So I just want to say thank you guys. A couple days ago, Egg Country, which is one of the local banks here that we work with, they brought out lunch for us as well. They brought out seven meals that night. So I guess that's supper. Just want to say thanks to them too for anybody that brings me meals out in the field. Of course, that includes my editor and wife. It's just cool. It's like a, it's like a small town thing. I don't know, farming community deal. It's just cool. Look. FFA brought you some hot chili and a bar. Nice. It's on the break room and the on the table in the break room. Jim's the only one that's not going to be coming through here in the next 20 minutes, so I'm going to run his chili up to him because. You, you gotta eat the stuff hot or it's not the same. Wow, whoever owns that combine, that is a sweet rig. He's somewhere back here, lost in the hills. There he is. There, now he's not gonna wither away out here. So this is our next field here. We're gonna leave this truck here because I think we're gonna use all three trucks. We're gonna be hauling straight from the field to the ethanol plant, I hope, because we're about a third of the way to the plant from here, and it's gonna be dry enough to take there, so that's the plan. Did they tighten up? They weren't uh, loose. They weren't? Uh, Even the air gun didn't tighten them up much? It didn't do much to that, I don't think. Okay. It's good chili, huh? Good chili, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty nice of them. They checked the, uh, the inside bolt, or the outside bolt, they put on the inside. Yep. That's what Nate said, they were pretty tight. That impact wrench is really good, that portable one. It must be, huh? Yeah, now Jocelyn are switching air, he's putting air in the tires. I haven't checked that side at all. Okay. We gotta check the top ones, they're different size range for the port. Oh, they're different size, okay. Yeah. Have you switched bins yet? No, but I switched the LP tanks just a minute ago. Okay. Onyx, your bike is not red anymore. If anybody remembers, this is the same bike he had two weeks ago. Used to be red. He went all out on that thing. Time to switch a bin. We don't want to be going into that one anymore. So I'm going to shut the, shut the rollers off here. Head down to 0% and clean those out. The blower is off now, so I can swap these tubes over. I'm going to go from that bin to this bin. Smaller bins 
there, so there should be seven or eight thousand bushels yet that we can put in there. Start the unload again. Make sure the air system kicks off. There we go. And we'll go back here, make sure there's no leaks in the pipes. Everything looks pretty good. And since it's so warm out now compared to what it's been, I'm gonna climb up there and reset the vaporizer. It actually feels pretty good, so I'm gonna leave it alone. So is the east tank turned off? Or does the new... It's turned off. So we're pulling just out of the west, one. Of the west one. Yeah. Okay, all right. We just switched our LP tanks here. Corn's been so dry that all we've had to do is take out of this tank. We haven't even had to get any more LP this year. So we're pulling out of the one we just set this summer. We purposely waited until now when the weather was nicer and we were towards the end, just in case the tank or the lines were a little bit dirty and we end up having some problems. We wanted the weather to be nicer and we wanted the majority of our corn through. So we're three quarters of the way done now. So just in case we have some issues, we waited. All right, time to bring some diesel fuel up to Jim so he can keep going. I'm told there's diesel in it, but just to be sure, as the PIC pilot in command here, I'm gonna double check. Now the reason I didn't bring diesel to Jim when I brought him his lunch was because I had to get down south to get to Allen, and Dad wanted this diesel tank to fill the combine. Five to seven. I am one mile away with the fuel tank, so if you're towards the north end of your rows there, you wanna meet me over by the gate on the township road. Thunder. Why should I have called you? You don't need them. Two is more than enough. You sure some on this field? Yep. Really? Just oh, that, that surprises me. This one isn't too bad for rocks normally. Stupid, crusty, messy diesel exhaust fluid government juice. Inspect for damage here. They all look good. Had somebody recently ask me why we run the ridiculously big tires on this thing. It's a compaction issue. Bigger tire, bigger contact patch, spreads the weight out more, less compaction in heavy, black, sticky, wet soils like we normally have. This fall happens to be dry. But normally that's not the case, which is the reason we run tracks on a lot of things. That's a nearly 600 horsepower tractor. So honestly, I thought uh, that's pretty common around here. Everybody runs big tires on those big horses. If you had a 450 horsepower articulating tractor, maybe you want to run some narrower tires if you're using it for planting or something. But no, we like a wide footprint. The dryer's still running, so that's a good sign that the gas coming in out of that new tank is clean. Meanwhile, the excavators have brought a bunch more fill in here and I see he's back there right now getting the dozer warmed up. We got good news on that yesterday. They plan on bringing the materials out here in about a week. And about a week after that, they are going to start building us a building. So we're getting close. Sounds like the first truck we sent to the ethanol plant was plenty dry. So they sent the third one that was sitting here that was meant for me. But that means we don't have a cart driver. So here I am. I don't believe I've run grain cart one time this year yet. Did I get the auto tracking right? I've never done it yet. It sounded like it. I heard a beep in here and I, you're in the right spot, so I think you did. Sounds like the second load was 15.9. The wind died down to nothing. Look at that dust hanging tonight. You want me to load Al once he gets here and then you want to do that just load all three trucks and we could load the cart if we wanted to and then we'll all ride home together yeah i think if we just load the three trucks and then they can take off because then we'll have plenty of time to load it in the morning before one of the trucks comes back there's my first truck to fill i'll have to see if i can remember how to unload a grain cart but you'll figure it out Three trucks full, and then we'll all ride home together. Al, you're loaded. I got the front 
way too full, so shake it a little bit before you tarp it. Like a Polaroid picture. We've got what's called machine sink on between these two machines, meaning the tractor I'm in is supposed to track perfectly with the combine. We're kind of testing it, doing some end rows here, going around corners. That isn't gonna work right there. That got way too wide. It works around gradual corners, but anything sharp, it loses track. Just got a text from Nate. He says his load was 16%. Okay, so that's the wettest one, but that, I think we're pretty good then. Truck two of three. The ethanol plant is closed. I don't know if I said that yet or not. So we're just gonna load these and have them ready for morning. You forget just how fast these things move grain out. Once the truck starts getting full, you better move or it's gonna be spilling. About 20,000, 25,000 more pounds before we have enough to- How much do you have on deck? I was gonna break through in the middle, but. Now I'm thinking it's going to get dark and the trucks are all full. I'll just grab these 12 rows right south of us going to the east. We got 33,000 on right now. Okay, I'll just grab those rows for a little bit. It's still a cool angle even in the dark. Just a good shot. We got 53 on right now, so we need a little bit more for a truck. Okay. Last truck to fill for the night right here gonna be an early night but there's no sense in continuing to go here because the ethanol plants closed and there's no sense in hauling it back home the opposite direction of the ethanol plant what do you know, Not much. What do you know? absolutely nothing well the convoys headed home we're done for the day kind of an early day but we'll start a little earlier in the morning and the dryer's not running so I'm assuming it's out of corn which I figured it would run out according to my math it should have run out while I was gone there we go out of wet grain hey cat if you're going all the way up there at least check it okay you are a weird cat lately you know that all right cat dog let's go eat some supper <laughs> Cat Dog's real name is Ray. At least that's what the girls named him.